I feel a little bit like I've just, somebody's trying to sell me snake oil. First to face the dragons, a beauty salon owner who says she has what could be called the holy grail of hair care, a product which can prevent grey hair. Hello dragons, my name is Sajda and I am owner and founder of X Grey. I am looking for a £50,000 investment in return for 10% of my company. X Grey is innovation at its best, consisting of two unique formulated products currently not available on the market today. I call my products X Grey Prevention and X Grey Chroma. Market research has shown that the number one concern for men over the age of 40 is going grey. What sets me apart from my competitors is firstly, there is no topical product on the market for the prevention of grey hair. And secondly, my unique selling points for X Grey Chroma are, it only needs to be applied for five minutes maximum for 100% grey hair coverage, does not cause any temporary staining to the skin, has multiple applications, and does not require any prepping or mixing prior to use. I've spent the last 18 months and £40,000 of my own money to help develop these products. Dragons, when you look in the mirror and you can see your grey hairs, think X grey. What have you got that can prove that you have a product that prevents grey hair? It's X grey prevention. It has a combination of three active ingredients. And what it does is it mimics the alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, which we already have in our body, which is responsible for rebuilding the melanin and pigment that we have in our skin and hair. When's the best time for me to take it? Um, my age range that I would be looking at for prevention would be from 25 upwards, depending on when, you know, if they see the first grey hair coming through, that would be when you would start using it. If Sajda has genuinely discovered a way of preventing grey hairs, then her fortune could be made. But Deborah Meaden will clearly take some convincing. I can't get beyond the fact that I feel a little bit like I've just, somebody's trying to sell me snake oil. I just want to understand how you can back up a claim that says this prevents people going grey. Because it mimics the alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone. Please don't just keep repeating long words to me because you said that in the first place. In terms of the actual testing of the product yeah. that allows you to make claims to say this prevents, and this isn't covering up, mm -hmm. this is actually saying that our hair colour, our own hair colour, we prevent losing it, doesn't go grey. What's the testing that's been done on that? So I've done an efficacy study which has been done um, by a Chinese company and I also have the cosmetic company's ex vivo trials as well with me. Have you got those here? Yes. Would you like to see them? So this is the heavy study that we've done and inside here, which is a lot of reading, is the one from the main cosmetic company. What is an efficacy study from a Chinese company? What does that actually mean? So the efficacy study is to see if the product actually works. The age range of the volunteers, how many grey hairs they had when they started using it, day 14, day 28. So how many people did you test it on? 50. And over what period of time? 28 days. And what happened during those 28 days? There was an increase for the people who were younger, so the early stages of greying hair. So if they had, let's say, four grey hairs out of 96, by day 28, some of them had 100% back to their natural hair colour. This has been about out since 2012, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So in three years, nobody's bothered to mention the fact that there is actually a product out there that actually stops greying of hair. Do you not find that slightly odd? No, not at all. Why is that? Because um, hair loss, to give you an example, people don't jump on the bandwagon straight away. You have they got to be take... kidding. You have got to be kidding. 
the person who actually genuinely comes up with something that can prevent grey hairs is going to be unbelievably wealthy. They're going to be sitting in this chair, not in here pitching. What makes me really, really cross about this is I absolutely cannot believe it works. The list, the safety hazard data sheet is, is disgraceful. It reads like a horror story. And then I get to how it's tested. And it's tested on rabbit eyes. That's the glycerine, the one Inhalation ingredient. of oral th for the mouse and uh, rabbit skin. It's not tested on animals. There is one ingredient that's tested it's the on raw animals. material that's which has been animals. tested in that's 2012. Tested on, it says it's tested on animals. Yeah, absolutely. So in you can stand here and say it's not tested on animals. This says it's tested on animals. Yeah. This type of thing makes me really cross. You're doing it unethically, you're making claims that you can't possibly make, and you're trying to pull people in to buy product that does, cannot do its job. And if I'm wrong, I will stand up publicly and I will say it, but I am not. I'm out. So I'll ask you a simple question. Yeah. Um, you developed this in some lab or somewhere? No, I didn't develop it, sorry. I had a formulations team and a manufacturer Fine. develop well, it for me. Do you honestly believe that if they knew what they had here, that they wouldn't be shouting about us in the whole of America? Absolutely, but I work with a manufacturer who doesn't do any marketing. That is he only marketing. manufactures, he doesn't I mean, have the time for it, marketing. It, it's like, if you, say, if you said to anybody in the world, I can stop you going bored, and we've had all that, yeah. right? All of a sudden, the business would be worth billions before you even start. Um, aren't you ripping off somebody else's product? Not at all. But they're because the this is what they do. This is what they do. But they... But they're, they're the manufacturer and they've spent all of this money researching this. And little old you come along and say, you know what, I'll take that product and I'm going to go and develop my own brand. What they do is they make the innovative product then the big boys, let's say if it's L'Oreal or Johnson & Johnson or little old me, will go and will purchase the formulation that they have. And that's how they make their business. I then have increased the formulation by six times to a 3%, which costs a lot more. So I own the formulations. So you've increased the formula and now you've come up with this Eureka piece? Yeah. I'm going to tell you where I am very quickly because this is a sort of a bold statement. Yeah. The miracle cure. I just don't buy into it. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Further disappointment for Sajda as Peter Jones dismisses her claims. Will Sarah Willingham or Nick Jenkins show any more faith in her anti-graying miracle? This is globally an absolutely massive market. These companies throw hundreds of millions at formulating the right, the right product to solve that particular problem. It just seems too extraordinary to be true. I just can't get past it, I'm out. I think you've come in here, I think you're a chancer. I do not believe that this works. And exactly like Deborah, I will also stand up publicly and apologise if I'm wrong, but I don't believe for a second that I am. I'm out. Thank you. Four Dragons have rejected Sajda's business, all unconvinced of her product's ability to deliver on its promises. With only retail giant Tuka Suleiman remaining, she's a hair's breadth from failure. Sajda, I think you believe what you're told. But in, in reality, you're making all these presumptions, 
Wake up. Dream's over. I'm out. Thank you very much, dragons. Sajda must leave the den with nothing. But despite the mauling she's just received, her belief in her product remains unbroken. They're so gonna regret that. I do hope we're not wrong. Because <laughs> we are. <laughs> we've just turned down billions if we are. I'm really disappointed that they actually thought that I was a chancer. <laughs> you know, I have a really good name in my industry. I'm waiting for the day when Sarah and Deborah stand up publicly and apologise to me because I have got a phenomenal product. <laughs>